Uh, yeah, this is Lanny's trick. Lonnie's trick? Lanny? I'm not sure if I've heard it said out loud before. Uh, this was the surprise Pico 8 game made by Maddie Thorson, Noel Berry, and Lena Rain. In like two days, three days? Very fast. It was made in uh, celebration, just made to mark the third anniversary of Celeste's release, which happened uh, last week, Monday, I believe it was. Had a big old community event. We did almost, we the developers did almost nothing to organize that. It was purely community, super, super cool. Um, really impressive, really amazing that they just came together and did this whole thing for us or for, you know, for the game. Uh, and also I had the opportunity to be completely trounced in, uh, Celeste Bingo by Maddie Thorson. <laughs> I didn't, I played pretty well for a while and then I made some really poor late game choices and, uh, yeah, it went downhill fast, <laughs> got rolled, had nightmares for a few days about my bad choices. That's all right. Um, I'm probably never going to play bingo again. It's just taking years off my life. It's too stressful. <laughs> Way too stressful. Uh, right. So let's see here. What's going on? We got some folks in the chat who are not falling asleep for once. Look at that. We got, uh, oh, there's we got Aaron Ransley. Yo, Jack Menhorn. Speak of the devil. There he is. He'll be on the call shortly. <clears throat> Uh, he creates. Yo, you're here. What up? Excellent. Edwin, one of the folks we're uh, taking a look at today. Excellent. Frederick Max. Oh, uh, that's a name I recognize from Twitter. I think it was. Are you with with Bjorn? I think you're with Cujo, right? If I recall correctly. Jeff McMillan, there he is. What's up, pal? Josh, you're not falling asleep. I hope you're just awake, having dinner or something. <laughs> Alex, good to see ya. Uh, Swika, Swuka, how how do you pronounce that name? Where you're from? Pomodi, yo, Great Goon, yo, Turd Crusader. There's a handle. <laughs> Welcome on in. That's nice. One more time. One more time. Feeling feeling chill. It's calming me down. Being off balance at noon. It's all right. Sergio, hey. Glad you can make it for this one. Finally looking at your stuff, man. It's been a while. I submitted a long time ago. Addy, hey. Tom Radio. Ali, look, listen. Hey, yo, what up? <laughs> there's a lot of good folks here right now. There's more than, there's like 50 people here. I'm, I was, I'm surprised. I kind of assumed that a lot of people wouldn't realize it was at noon this week. Like, is this purely, like, in fact, many people did not realize this at noon, but just many more are in Europe? <laughs> is that what it is? We're just totally, uh, you know, making it all work somehow. Well, I'm glad everyone's here. Uh, yeah, Jeff Lee, exactly. Weird stream. There it is. Jeff Lee had no idea what was happening. Submerged tapes. Yo. Is your logo now submerged? Did you fix that? I think it was called out that it was not submerged. In your logo, <laughs> it was fully emerged. <clears throat> um, yeah, so today, I'm I'm jacked. We're we're really fortunate. Oh, you did submerge it. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, we're very fortunate to have a guest panel here from Obsidian Entertainment. Uh, hit up Justin Bell on Twitter. Um, like last year, I think it was like last November or something. It was like, hey, any chance? Because Justin had expressed some interest in uh, in maybe doing it again sometime. So um, Justin's not on the call for the uh, for the stream today, but he was instrumental in helping to organize and get a panel going. So we in fact have Rayson Varner, Jack Minhorn, and Felipe Pereira, who are just chilling on Discord, waiting to get on here. Um, before we do that, I kind of want to watch this. Trailer. I saw it a long time ago when it first came out, but I want to see it again. Oh, and in fact, let's make sure it's not at 5% volume, shall we? Uh, let's go.
We have always known war. It forged our empire. Turned heroes into queens and kings. And decimated our foes. Now our oaths are lost, forsaken. And you must face the monsters. Our sins have borne. Is an oath worth the weight of a crown? There it is. Some impressive aim, yes. Some impressive arrows. <laughs> yeah, no, it's sweet. That's a that's a really nice, um, like audio wise, like a, a really nice combination of like the what it sounds like approach and like the very cinematic approach. So when the arrow hits, you hear like the debris, but you also hear like a <laughs> nice and wide. Big fan of that stuff. Um, okay, well, I guess we might as well get them going here. Yeah. Shall we? Let's do. Uh, uh, uh. Here we go. Here we go. We'll file in slowly. Here we go. Um, hey. One second. Welcome in, guys. Oh. And I'm going to turn <clears throat> off my camera, which should fix this. One second. One second. This is a really finely tuned engine here at Power Up. <laughs> hey, there we go. It works. Okay, you're now yeah, visible on stream. You wore the wrong color Photo. shirt. You wore the wrong shirt. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Did you get the memo, dude? Hold on, hold on. All right. Let me... We're obsidian <laughs> Light blue entertainment. Let me put my... We're all on the same diet now. It's called black <laughs> shirt. <laughs> Uh, welcome on in guys. Thank you for making time, um, during the day for, you know, it's, it's hard to find any time during the week, but yeah, I really appreciate that. Thanks for having us, man. Okay. Yeah. So I'll do, a, I'll, I'll spare you have an intro yourselves. So at far left, left to my, yeah, to my right. There we go. We got Jack Menhorn, uh, lead audio, audio designer, Obsidian, um, credits in the past, this integration, uh, Lawbreakers, I was with, with uh, Boss Key Productions and Nova 111 with Funktronic. I think that's when I first met you back in what 2014? Was it PAX? We're old. It was a long time ago. Jeez. Yeah, it was the Mega Booth, I think. Right? Was it PAX 10 that year also? It was PAX 10, yeah. Got some love, man. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, next to Jack, we got Felipe Pereira, audio designer. Uh, worked on previously Heroes of the Storm, though, over at Blizzard. And Overwatch one and two, and is now with the uh, working on the Outer Worlds franchise. And finally, about Rayson Varner, at far right, uh, project audio director for Avowed currently. That you know what you just watched right now. Nice work, man. Uh, previously at Gearbox with Borderlands three and two and one, and Aliens Colonial, Mar Colonial Marines. That was a favorite, right? Uh, Red Faction mm -hmm. Guerrilla Remastered. The best. <laughs> Uh, and Saints Row 2. That was with, with, was that Volition or was it Deep Silver? Yeah, yeah we, I was at Volition back when Volition was part of THQ. Um, right, right. I was primarily on Red Faction Guerrilla, but I helped out a little bit on Saints Row 2 here and there. Okay, there you go. Um, right, so that get it all right for the most part, guys? Son of a, <laughs> son of a right? Yeah. Okay, killer. Um, well, thanks so much for rolling in. We're taking a look at some, some demo reel stuff. Uh, for anyone new in the chat, this is Real Talk. We're yeah having a look at some game audio demo reels and giving some constructive feedback to help these various folks try and land the gigs they're looking for. And given that with the spirit of this entire stream, it's all about people trying to find traction in whatever corner of the industry they're working toward. 
it can be really helpful to you know remind ourselves that yes, everyone started somewhere, even people who are you know very established and doing it in their their current uh, you know daily life. So if you guys are down for it, I'd love to hear kind of how y'all got your own starts. So maybe if we start with a uh, far right with Rayson, are you down? Yeah, sure. Sweet. Um, so uh, I started off as a composer. I'm a hybrid composer and sound designer. Um, I did, um, I guess it was uh, not the official title, but it's basically the music director on Borderlands 3 um and uh worked with all of our outsourcers i was also one of the uh primary composers on that um i also did uh, a ton of sound design um like ui design creature design uh physics um and the physics uh work has gone all the way back to red faction gorilla which was mm. probably the most intense uh physics uh system i ever worked with um but uh my kind of origin story was i started picking up piano like in montessori school just plinking things out and then it really kind of quickly became obvious that i was just going to pursue music even in middle school um mm. i think it was like sixth grade i was like i'm gonna do music for games that's what i'm gonna do that early. uh and i uh, just from that path on um i'm in the kind of the self-taught camp um so i wanted to go to college but then i saw what kind of debt I was going to incur by that. And I was always kind of comfortable learning from books. So I'd opted just to kind of do self-study and find interesting teachers for things like jazz piano and uh, things like that. And that just steadily grew into building up sound design chops until I had my first paid position on a game called Prey, the original Prey done by Human Head Studios. Mm -hmm. um, sure. And uh, that was kind of my entrance. I started off as an unpaid intern. I tried to make myself indispensable. Um, then I ran out of money. And then so they started paying me because it turned out I was useful to them. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but they, they were a great studio. Like I, I loved working for them. Uh, and um, I really loved my time there. And that was the springboard that then led to Volition. And then uh, Volition led to Gearbox. And I was at Gearbox for 13 years. Hmm, nice. I actually, you know, I, I hadn't realized you with human head briefly i actually i myself actually did some outsource work for well kind of human head they had a, a separate um branch called oh what was it called it's called like shaggy dog or something like that it was like a it was Ooh. still under the same umbrella but it was like mobile stuff and oh interesting it was okay. with a game called fort courage and it was like a tower defense thing where your your kids like in a bedroom like imagining monsters and like throwing pumpkins and stuff it's really bizarre yeah lots of gory pumpkin explosion sounds <laughs> that's awesome so i'm i'm shocked yeah i really that, enjoyed uh working with chris reinhardt over there yeah. right right yeah um i'm i was shocked to hear that you you knew from such a young age that you wanted to be in the game space because like for me personally i didn't even because i was also like from pretty early uh you know i was like really into the game space just like playing video games and stuff and my friend at school would be like you're gonna work in games one day and i was like well i don't know but the <laughs> the the thing is, I don't think games were as like ubiquitous as they are these days. So it wasn't as obvious a mm -hmm. career path. So like for me, I also you know went to post secondary for music and stuff, played piano like yourself at a young age, and I thought like I'll do film scores because that seemed like the movies were a little more like a legit legitimate industry. So like, what yep. were you playing in in grade six that made you want to work in games? Oh, Final Fantasy VI for sure. And I'm a Nobu Uematsu, <laughs> you know, inspired individual and. Uh, Back then it was, I was kind of doing the same thing. I was like kind of hedging it like, well, I could do film, I could do games, I guess I'll, you know, either one. Um, and uh, I was such a fan of his music in Final Fantasy VI that I found a, like a, a, a CD, ordered it from Japan, which was like the first live orchestral arrangement of um, kind of old minified music. And that, that, you know, that pretty much just put me right in the game camp. Um, and then more I learned about games, I'm just like, I'm insatiably curious and I'm a bit of a generalist. So my interests mm -hmm. range from everything from like learning particle VFX to doing color grading, to being a writer and doing voice acting as well. Um, Cause I did a bunch of writing for the, the Borderlands games. I was the, the original writer of Brick and BL1. Um, I write and voice the Psycho Bandit. Um, and so anyways, you don't have that that opportunity in film to put your hands in so many pots. So yeah, I, um, I love system design. Um, I love interpersonal psychology and developing policies that are friendly to maintaining creative states. 
in people. So anyway, so all that stuff, the more those things stack, the more I was like, well, there's only one path here and that's mm-hmm. games. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's, that's great. what brought me there. It's like the whole kind of T-shaped individual. You're like super good at one thing. And that's like your title, but then you just have a ton of other options available to you too. That's super cool. Uh, well, thank you for sharing. Yeah. Uh, Felipe, yeah, you want to want to roll in next? What's your origin sure. story, man? I didn't know all that about racing. That's really cool. <laughs> we because we haven't like actually met in person any of us because I started working at Obsidian in October, so like mm. everything's been virtual. Um, uh, so I was an animation student first, and I started making music because I was hanging out with the music guys in my um, my school. And ended up dropping out of animation because I was just like so uh, consumed with like learning to make music Um, and then pursued that for like a good three years, like doing the EDM thing and like playing shows and putting out like EPs Um, and then reached a point where like I was pretty broke (laughs) and um, and I always had this like I've, I've always been into games and like that was something I always like dreamed of doing. So just my, like, I had this idea that like, I'm going to apply to Blizzard as like a, a localization QA. Cause I saw there was like an opening for it and it, it's localization QA in Brazilian Portuguese, which is like so specific. Um, so I applied for that. I got that. And I already had this idea of like, all right, I'm just going to like, like this is my foot in the door. I'm going to like just get in like, in. Yeah. <laughs> and like see what I can do with like sound or whatever. And I thought it was like going to be music because, you know, I was making music. I wasn't even really aware of sound design until I met uh, Jeff Garnett, who was like in my um, new hire group. And I like learned about what he did and um, hooked up with uh, Pedro Seminario as well from our like workout group. So really just like, met sound designers, like saw what they were doing and then started to like, uh, try to do some myself, get like critiques from them. So I was like super lucky to like, you know, have that, uh, proximity with like really talented dudes. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, uh, I started doing, uh, Berkeley online courses just to like, you know, cause I I figured I was in a job I didn't really like, (laughs) like I didn't like QA localization. So I figured, since I, I have like the proximity to these people, I need to be ready if an opportunity comes up. So like, that's where I start like kind of filling gaps in my education um, with like sound design courses and game audio courses and uh, like music composition, just in case, like I just mm-hmm. wanted to be in audio in some capacity. Uh, and then two years later, after kind of doing that, uh, there was an opportunity for like a temporary assignment on the Heroes of the Storm team. And I was like buddies with those guys for years at this point and like already sending them stuff for critique. So I, I like ramped that up even more. And like I sent Pedro, I'd just like text him like little videos of like a spell from heroes of the storm, like a little, like 10 second clip mm-hmm. and like with my own sound did that enough times where he's like, all right, like come, uh, come hang out with me like after work and I'll like, show you what you're doing wrong basically because <laughs> that wasn't very good and he did which was uh amazing and uh through that i got the ta which was like six months and just like uh absorbed so much from those guys uh and they were super super gracious with like everything that they knew um and uh yeah that became a full-time position and then so i spent three years on that team and then moved to the Overwatch team and did that for, uh, I think, just under two years and then went to Obsidian. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah, I, just one thing I want to point out, you, you said you were lucky to be amidst those people, but I mean, you certainly put yourself in that environment. You know, it's not like you just were on the train or something and then, you know, sure. just, <laughs> that's, uh, yeah. that's a... Did, that's a just no. getting the localization job was hard because like they required a degree and like i said like i dropped out of animation school so so like i i spent like a week like trying to find audio uh um trying to find localization bugs in world of warcraft to like make a video of me like doing the job so they could see i could do it and then send that in with my uh with my stuff like my super like weak ass uh <laughs> resume and then 
And then later I learned like, because of that, like my, my video was like shared around the office and like kind of got me in the door. Yeah. That can't be that common for that kind of application. Like for, for that kind of role to have a video of you doing like QA. No, <laughs> I, I got, I got really lucky on that gig too, because like finding a Brazilian American, uh, of dual, they need dual citizenship, um, that can speak both languages is into games, you know, wants to do QA. Like it's a very specific kind of person. So mm -hmm. yeah, you, you check yeah, the boxes. My, certainly my little back door into blizzard. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, yeah. Thanks a lot, man. Um, Jack, you want to go next? Sure. Uh, so I knew I wanted to get into games in high school, early high school, when Halo and Morrowind came out and had really great uh, musical scores. So, yeah, I started <clears throat> uh, then knowing that I wanted to get into to, to game, game audio, specifically composing. So I started trying to get a... Uh, taking classical guitar lessons because surprise surprise uh i play guitar um <laughs> i'm just the one that doesn't have uh mine hanging up uh i don't have to show it off like these guys uh <laughs> but i started guitar lessons but just wasn't really like keen on it like classical guitar lessons so eventually i started doing community college to get like a you know uh, associates in arts while taking piano lessons, then I went to college for piano um, slash kind of composition. Got a degree in piano performance. Hmm. Uh, all all during that time, I was also living in North Carolina, which has uh, game companies now that hire, but back then not so much. Like Epic was a much smaller uh, house. Uh, Red Storm was a much smaller house. There there is an Insomniac studio, but back then it was. Uh, about a dozen people, if any. Mm -hmm. um, so there weren't really many local options to get my foot in the door, despite what I would try. Um, so I was doing a lot of uh, remote work. Now, fortunately, right when I was trying to get into games like uh, late aughts, early 2010, uh, you know, um, the iPhone kind of mobile space was really blowing up. So I was able to start getting gigs doing, you know, mobile music. And many of those gigs started um, going, oh, well, we're already paying you for music. Do you want to do the sound effects as well? I'm like, sure. And I, over time, I started finding out that I had, I had a, a much more interest and in an affinity for sound design than I did uh, music. Um, uh, but one of the the gigs I got um, local in North Carolina was at a mobile developer uh, as QA. So um, I started out as QA doing, you know, iPhone, Android testing for a Tetris clone and a Match 3 clone and that, those sorts of things. <clears throat> they eventually uh, wanted to stop paying their QA lead um, and pay me less to do the same job. <laughs> So, so they did, so then I was sure. QA lead at the mobile developer. Uh, and then they started doing licensed games for Paramount, um, like a Godfather slot machine and a Hansel and Gretel. You remember that Hansel and Gretel movie with Jeremy Renner? Like we did a, a match three game based on that. Or no, it was a slot game based on that. But they also did uh, a triple triad, the card game from Final Fantasy VIII. They did a clone of that for Star Trek. And right when they were starting to like, yeah, we're going to do a Star Trek. I, I uh, went to the producer at the company. I was like, look, you know, I'm an audio person first. And like, I got to shoot my shot here. And like, I'll do the sound as well as the QA for it. So that's why I have a Star Trek game on my, my resume, which is pretty cool. You can't play it anymore because it's an early 2010s iPhone game and none of those work anymore. Right. But you know, I, I still I still got to work, you know, in the same space as a lot of really talented sound designers on that franchise. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. But nice. anyway, I was uh, so doing a lot of mobile games and indie games, some free projects where like the, the, the project itself is free. And so I'm kind of trying to build my resume there, getting some gigs, working uh, remote with uh, I mean, even when I was working on Nova 111 for Funktronic Labs. That was like a four year project and they were in Japan and then eventually in California working on that. I was working with 
developers in Serbia, UK, Germany, um, kind of all over the place while being in a podunk town in North Carolina. Eventually, some people at Epic peeled off and made Boss Key Productions uh, that I had kind of, and I knew the kind of the audio director there because I had been setting up uh, game dev, uh, game audio lunches with the devs at different companies, kind of, you know, wanting to to glean knowledge for them, but also going, hey, I'm I'm a, a person you can eventually hire. That's a nice bonus, um, definitely. And then, you know, one eventually <laughs> did hire me. I worked at Bosky for about three years. We shipped Lawbreakers, and then I moved out west here in Redmond uh, to work at V1 on Disintegration, and now I'm remote again on uh, with Rayson working at, at Obsidian. Killer. I mean, of course, you were also, you've been like really involved in the game audio community in general. I mean, you were uh, editor-in-chief at designing, designingsound.org for what, like five years, six years, something like that? Uh, uh, time is a fluid construct, but yes, it would, um, <laughs> it was a while. Yeah. Working at, that was, that was another thing that kind of just fell in my lap is, um, uh, Miguel Saza was, uh, trying to kind of pull back from being the editor in chief of designing sound. And I was working in community things on Twitter and other sites. And mm -hmm. I, my name got recommended like, Hey, do you want this really cool resource? And do you want to run it now? And I'm like, okay. Yeah. Like uh, I, sure. I knew your name from like really early on. Uh, cause like I, I began at, uh, a somatone, like another third party house a long time ago. Right. A uh, real, real long time ago. I was there for like three years ish and they had like zero community involvement whatsoever. Like I didn't know the industry existed. Basically I was like in a cave of an office every day. And as soon as I left that cave, I was like, Oh my God, there's like a lot of people out there in the world. And, and yeah, like Jack's, I, after I met Jack at, at PAX in 2014, it was like, I just kept seeing your name everywhere. So yeah, it's certainly helps just to, I mean, not unlike, Felipe, just like putting yourself in the spot where you were seen and suddenly the jobs, you know, are a little more likely to happen. Um, so I guess that's an excellent segue. Thanks so much, Jack, into why we're here. We're looking at a few things. We're looking at um, Edwin Garcia. That's E Creates Audio in the chat right now. We're looking at Sergio Ronchetti, which I think is just Sergio Ronchetti in the chat. <laughs> if I recall your handle. There he is. Yeah. And also uh, Enrico uh, er Ericole. I'm going to butcher these names for sure. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, we're looking at some game audio content and trying to help them land gigs themselves. That's the idea. So we're going to be looking at it from a few different angles here. We're looking at it from uh, uh, presentation, material selection, content quality, and distinction. So for presentation, we're looking at just the website on the whole, just in general, kind of, you know, how you're communicating your, your person to people who might not know you very well or at all. And uh, just if there's enough information or too much information, if the most important stuff is the first thing we see, that kind of thing. For the reels presentation that comes into, you know, things like the length of the thing comes into play, the general flow, uh, like the story you're telling, um, titling information, all that stuff. For material selection, we're looking at what pieces they have selected for their reels for their portfolio and what those various materials might suggest about their past work history, their current skill sets, and uh, maybe most importantly, their future ambitions. And again, we don't, we're, we're acting as though we have never seen these people before. I have not watched these reels before um, and just going in blind to kind of best emulate uh, what a first impression might be like. And the third thing here, content quality, just simply, is it good? Is it that, that the industry standard of awesome and if there's room to improve, we'll try to give you some some points as far as what uh, where you might next focus your attention. And finally, distinction is a bit of a yes, no, just simply, are you standing out in a crowd? Because there are a lot of people vying for the same gigs out there. Um, I'm not sure if, if uh, Race and you want to divulge how many applications you get for a given junior position, but it's, uh, I've heard like hundreds is pretty typical. Um, <clears throat> we were hiring um, a composer uh, back before I left Gearbox, and I want to say it was around 250 a week. Um, yeah. And we took a break for two weeks, and then we had a backlog of like almost a thousand. <clears throat> um, so, um, and it, it it was interesting. It was the first time I had that amount of flood, and we actually had to fight our feelings about like we were being unfair by not giving a full listen through, but 
our backlog got so big that the necessity forced us to make really quick judgments. Yep. And so oftentimes, even the people reviewing it f feel bad <laughs> about not being able to give it, but that's kind of the realities in the squeeze mm -hmm. um, that a lot of us as candidates are in. And uh, yeah. Yeah, it comes up a lot on this stream how it's just so important to utilize your first 10 seconds as effectively as you can for that precise reason. Cause it's, uh, I, I, there was some, like some podcast or something like years back was talking about, um, uh, the, the real talk talk that we gave that myself and Matthew Martinson from clay entertainment here in Vancouver, we gave at GDC, uh, yeah, in 2018. And we pushed that idea so hard, like use your first 10 seconds as best you can. And they were like, that seems mean to me on this podcast afterwards. And I was like, well, yeah, sure. It probably seems mean, but it just is the case. You just have, like what you're saying, just when you have that, that volume of work to get through, uh, yeah, I mean, even like when we were hiring, we had like 150 applications, which is not very many, but for a smaller outfit. And it's, even us, it's still like in the first 10 seconds, we're like, oh, okay, yes, yeah, probably not. And just moving on. And, uh, and it's, it's crazy. I mean, I'll, I'll, I won't name any names, but we... One of the people that we did that to is actually like in a high level position at a AAA company right now. And just, we just, the first 10 seconds, we just made a bad call. <laughs> That's all it came down to it. So it's, uh, it's certainly not always um, the best representation uh, of, of what that person's abilities are or what their value is, but just, it's kind of uh, the lens you end up looking through whether you like it or not. Um, all right, great. So, uh, yeah, distinction. Are you sending out? Yes, no. That's the end of the, that's the last thing we're going to look at for each person. So, uh, I guess we'll start with Edwin. Um, Edwin's been a long time viewer of the stream. So it's really fun to, uh, it's, it's always exciting to finally get to see people's work. Um, when I've been seeing them in the chat for so long, you know, uh, let's do it. And you guys have all the, all the links in front of you, right guys? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So I'll zoom in just a hair here. We got Edwin Garcia, sound designer for games. Uh, real is the first thing we see. Cool. We got real blog about and contact. So I don't know if you guys have looked, this up, looked at this already, but um, little game we play. When when do you think, you know, we'll put you on the spot, Felipe. When do you think the last blog post was? The last blog post was? Like the most recent one. Um, I'm going to say a couple of days ago. A couple, couple of days ago. <laughs> possibly announcing that uh, he was going to be on the show. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will guess, I will guess November of last year. That's my, my guess. Let's see here. Blog. We got, uh, December of last year. Okay. Close. Still not that long ago. Nice. Um, yeah, we've seen the occasional blog post. It's from like 2016. It's like, okay, you might want to just not link to your blog in that case. <laughs> uh, okay. We got about and contact and search. Interesting. I've never seen search on a page before. That feels very template-y. Um, let's go to the about first. We got, there he is, looking dapper. Uh, what should an about page have? Some random facts about me? Information that demonstrates my love for sign design? I'm not quite sure myself, but I'm just going to talk about myself, share my life, and share my experiences. My entire life, I've wanted to make a huge impact with my passion. Around late 2017, I started to think of other things I wanted to do artistically other than music. I loved and still love jazz music, uh, but I wanted to do other things. I started dabbling with the idea of film scores, video game scores, and sound design. After a year of, after a year or so of trying out these things, sound design was my favorite of the three. Does it keep going? Oh, this is a long about, man. This is very long. There's a merit of artistry and craft craftsmanship that comes with sound design that I love. The beauty of taking something totally foreign and transforming it into something else is magical. The craftsmanship. Uh, needed to mix and implement audio is thrilling to me. Some of the greatest joys I've had in the past two years is when I'm having an issue with Wise. I feel doomed, and then I finally figure out the issue and get it to work. One of the, once my sound banks weren't syncing for day for two days, and when I got it to work, I hooted and hollered loudly and ran around my apartment with my arms in the air like Rocky Balboa. I think we can all relate to that. Those are the moments that make life worth living and my work worth doing. And finally, my mission in life is to reach a level of excellence. Excellence as a sound designer, excellence as a son, as a person. It's my true objective in life to create a positive impact. I want people to remember me as a good person they, they had in their life. A person who did things the right way for the right reasons. And that's why every day when I wake up, I say, I want to make a positive impact in the world through sound. I don't say, I want another big gig. Or I want to get the job I applied for. Because those things come and go. But making a positive and positive impact in the world of, through sound 
that's forever. That's legacy. That's bringing joy to the life of gamers, inspiring other sound designers, and letting other people in the, the Latinx uh, community know they belong here. And that's what I'm all about. Okay, that's, it's certainly a very uh, wonderful philosophy. In terms of an about page, though, uh, race and how you feeling bio-wise? Maybe I'll ask you first, how do you feel about bios in general? Like, do you read bios? Sorry, I was muted. Um, I, I am terrified of writing bios. Writing about myself in the third or first person, I, I don't know. I tried online dating once, and that was just <laughs> as horrifying to me as trying to write my own bio. The Tinder bio so is tough. It's it is. hard. It's a really <laughs> difficult process. Um, but I really like the content, especially you know talking about your mission and everything. Um, that's really important because it says a lot about who you are without having to say who you are. Um, and, and that's a good way. Most of my feedback is just on formatting. Um, the vertical layout makes it feel like you have a lot more to read than you necessarily do. Um, so I would just suggest trying to do this in like three, a series of three columns and try to keep it down to a page that doesn't scroll um, while keeping the text legible and easily readable. Um, and the very first uh, paragraph or a few sentences, you, we could probably cut some of the exposition about what you're thinking before you write just in order to condense it down. Um, and that way your message will be really clear uh, and present. Um, and you can think of each photo and you sort of do this already. Um, but I would say just try to condense it down even more. So you're distilling it and distilling it and distilling it. And that's how you get the text that feels really strong. Mm -hmm. So if you're able to line these in kind of in a row, um, which is already a very welcoming aesthetic to come to because you can see exactly what you're about to read before you even read it. And if we condense the text down to just their core uh, things you're trying to communicate um, that doesn't lose any of the detail and the passion and your personality, um, that would be the sweet spot to land in, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And with the you know pleasant side effect of being courteous of, of employers or potential employers' time when they have a thousand reels to go through. Um, I mean, yeah, that's, that's a subtext that definitely comes through when that kind of effort is made. Sure. Uh, great. So then let's go to the contact page really fast. If you're interested in hiring me to work on sound design for your game, please contact me at, uh, okay. So that this tells me probably freelance interest, but we'll see and leave a reply. You can never comment and stuff. Uh, okay, cool. Let's go to the real. So front page. Hello, here's my demo reel showcasing my ability to create sounds for games. Thank you for watching. I hope you like it. If you'd like to contact me for my work, talk to me about the world or of sound, about the world of sound, or anything else, email me at. Um, yeah, I'm like, I'm a, I'm definitely biased towards minimalism in general, but basically anything on any page um, that you, I mean, just try, I, I would encourage everyone to look at your own pages and think, is this, is this content, this text, or is this whatever on my page unique to me? And if it's not unique to you, then it can probably be, you know, reconsidered or at least it, like be certain it needs to be there basically. So things like, um, like these first three sentences, I mean, basically the entire thing minus your specific email address, this could be on like literally any sound page. So it just seems like, uh, yeah, it's, it could maybe be trimmed back a bit, just, you know, trim the fat. Uh, let's go ahead and watch this thing though. Let's go. So I'm going to go full screen. I'm going to actually make sure I can mute myself too. One second. Uh, huh. There we go. Good. Okay. So I'll just, uh, I'll mute myself in a sec and we'll just watch this whole thing through. Yeah. Let's go. Three, two, one, and go. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, do one of these for a soundboard. <laughs> Thanks, Evan. Okay, so um, before we dive in, so if I if just for you guys, uh, if I don't have guest hosts on here, I'll generally pause um, or yeah, I'll pause and just comment in the middle if I ever felt the reaction like I might feel I've a seen enough or b I'd feel like they need to skip forward in it. Um, so for me, that would have happened probably around like the 20 second mark. I would felt like I could probably just see what else he had going. Um, but yeah, we can certainly come back and talk about that later on. Uh, I just want to let you know, Edwin, for your, for your, uh, sake. So, um, perhaps I'll start with Jack before we dive into any crazy minutia. Do you have any, just like a one sentence first impression here? Uh, um, it does feel a bit amateurish. I think there's some some easy wins there um, uh, with a bit more time, um, but I think it's a I think there's there's solid intent there. Um, yeah, cool. I'm inclined to agree. Awesome. So yeah, we can start with the uh, presentation, I suppose. So in terms of what's the beginning again? We got okay. So there are no titles. That's maybe that's worth talking about actually. Um, I certainly know what my opinion is. I've been doing this show long enough, but it's awesome having people like from the AAA space, especially come in. Cause I mean, I'm like exclusively indie, right? Uh, as far as when you get reels in um, racing, is it important to you to like get that impression, like the impression of like the name and contact info, et cetera, like right at the front of the whole, the whole video? Um, for the person or the sub, uh, the subtitles to the footage? Well, both actually. We'll go person first though. Okay. The subtitles are way more important to me um, because I already have the name in my head uh, from either viewing the resume or some internal HR system um, and so forth. Um, And that actually helps because if I don't understand the intent behind it, um, it actually leaves an information gap where it leaves it up to interpretation to the other person. So you're actually kind of weakening your... um, your intent if you don't have uh, those explanatory subtitles uh, right, what behind what would, was going into your mind and stuff like that or, or what the purpose was. The good thing is that we keep it to a minimum amount of words here. So, you know, because I just want to glance at it. I don't want to be reading it throughout. Um, and um, so the titles worked well for me when I was reviewing this. Cool. Uh, right. Yeah, it's, it's definitely um, the, the opinion has gone back and forth as far as like the opening title like the kind of the, the, the splash, you know, screen, so to speak, where it's like two seconds of, of like, Evan Garcia, let's go. Um, yeah. I have definitely had some where it's like, okay, well, that's not really adding anything to it, but when it's like really nicely designed or something and it's like a, you know, custom motion graphic or something, um, it can come across really nicely. Uh, yeah, it's like not, I agree with the, that, not the end sure. of the world if it's not there, but it's like, it's maybe like a plus if it is and it's awesome. Yeah. Um, okay, so as far as length goes... Um, Felipe, so you were, you, you kind of got into the industry in, in an interesting way. You just sent these little clips to your blizzard pals and stuff, right? Yeah. So you didn't yeah. really have a, a reel to, to speak of. It sounds like, yeah. um, do you, in your mind have like a length of a reel? It's like a golden, a golden number to hit. Um, uh, I think like two to three minutes. I, I made one for heroes of the storm. I have a heroes of the storm reel, which I think is two and a half minutes. Of Heroes of the Storm. Nice. So yeah. here, yeah, that's actually, that's interesting though. So in terms of real length, it seems like the feedback I, or the, again, opinions I usually get from various folks like yourselves is like the more, the the more experience the person has, the longer they can justify their real being. Because suddenly, I mean, someone gave, uh, I think like Mike Muraski and Emily Ridgeway from Valve were on here you know, a couple of years back. And they were saying they got one res- or one reel that was like, a 10 minute breakdown of all the technical audio systems in that game, Alice. And they're like, yeah, we watched the whole thing. It was awesome. But then that's like a Ted talk. You know? yeah. <laughs> it's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's actually, you have a lot of information to convey. Whereas someone who is not quite in this industry yet would probably have a harder time holding your attention for that length of time. Cause it's just, you know, it, it's harder to, to prove that that time is worth it when you're at that, that, that state in your, your, uh, your own career. So yeah, Rayson, do you, if you're, looking at someone maybe not like uh felipe where it's like he's got some some credits under his belt um do you feel like that's true like it should be kind of on the shorter side or you're still willing to sit through two or three minutes 
Uh, yeah, no, it should definitely be shorter. Um, funny, I haven't heard that phrase before, but as soon as you said it, it felt very correct to me because, um, in terms of like the more experience you need to have, the more leeway you have for a longer demo. Mm -hmm. Um, because the more experience you have, the more selective they're going to be at who they even look at. And then the ones they do look at, they're going to be looking at more in depth and they're also going to be looking for more than sound design chops. They're going to be like, do I get a sense of maturity? Does this sure. guy, you know, what is his production experience? What, you know, in terms of produce, uh, producing and schedules and stuff, there's a lot more questions there and they'll, they're going to be worried about a culture fit as well. Yeah. Um, probably more so than potentially a junior. So um, yeah, no, I, I would definitely agree with that. And when I was, you know, my site kind of languished as just the placeholder image for about 12 years. And when I started working on it, I was running to that very challenge. And I probably still have too much stuff on my own website. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's far too easy. And to like, I also everything. fall afoul of not having any blog posts yet. But the nice thing about <laughs> having a blog section without anything is that it really highlights how little you have. <laughs> so... Um, that's uh, I was laughing at myself when we were looking at that because I was like, yep, that reinforces my own. I was just saying to my wife the other day, like, <laughs> well, uh, I got to start writing some blogs because this is a giant hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's probably good exercise. It so, certainly yeah. doesn't. Uh, if there's like no blog link, you don't really miss it. But if there's a blog with nothing, it's like, why? Why, though? <laughs> why is this here? Yeah. Yeah. It's like either zero or like five. Uh, something in between is like, what is that person doing? Yeah. Uh, um yeah. so yeah 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 i'd say the length was uh appropriate cool um yeah i, did, I generally go for like the minute the minute I've, I've never watched a minute reel even if it seems like amateurish or something i'll like sit through a minute it's like i'll see the time before i press play i'm like that's oh, a minute cool i'll watch through who knows you know something cool is at the end maybe maybe one who, who, who knows so in terms of uh of the materials in here so it seems pretty indie ish like the or like the look of the games, at least it's certainly not like first person shooters or something. Um, the racing thing is kind of like triple I ish being a little more hi-fi, but, uh, so I guess the, the question being just what's your impression, Jack, of what kind of gigs Edwin is looking for with this reel? Yeah. I mean, it, it kind of does look like, uh, I think it says it's in the games focus. Yeah, there you go. Is, nice. Um, yeah, especially the the more eight bit of uh, the of Kamiko, eight eight sixteen bit sort of vibe, and the you know, the the Metroidvania platformer esque of the of the first one. It definitely seems focused at more more lower budget titles, mm -hmm. uh, with where where they might be the only audio person on the team or the only sound designer at least on the team. Yeah, sure. Okay, good. Well, you you did good there, Edwin. You, you pick the right things to redesign. So let's also finally talk about content quality here. Uh, there's a few, I mean, there was a lot of, like you said, Jack, like easy wins that I also heard. A big one is there was like popping throughout that's got to be dealt with. Um, Edwin, there's just in terms of, of fading your stuff, especially your low frequency stuff. If they're not faded off, you get these like really gross kind of technical pops and they're all throughout. Here, let's jump ahead to like the the Kamiko scene. There's a whole lot in here. Um, at the beginning, I think it was here. Like every fireball is like pop, 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 pop. So that's a bit of like a pretty early, like learned early in school kind of thing. And that's, a, that's, it ends up being kind of a, a, a bit of a, a, a flag. Like, okay, this person is at this stage in, in their, their learnings basically. So that's certainly a, a big one that you can deal with, like in in the immediate term. Um, yeah, uh, Felipe, do you want to jump in and give any any hot takes as far as things you think Evan could focus on next, as far as improving this design? Sure. Um, yeah, I to to me it it sounds like um, yeah, it, it just sounds like he's pretty early in his journey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um it, it it reminds me a bit of like my first uh sound design stuff um, yeah, me too <laughs> I just didn't, yeah i just didn't like develop the right sensibilities i guess um but it's certainly on the way there and like um yeah we all start somewhere and i think it's uh i think it's a, a good start i i think for me the impression i got a lot of stuff is like like my my mentor uh 
when I was like learning, he described like sound design as like a dish and then all the layers in your sound are like the ingredients. And I felt like I was hearing a lot of ingredients and not necessarily like a fully formed sound. Like there's lots of, um, lots of holes mm -hmm. in the sound mm -hmm. design, um, that could be filled. Um, I think, I think also, um, the Kamiko part felt a little empty cause I don't think there's an ambience. Yeah, I was going to call so it I out think, specifically in terms of your, your analogy. Absolutely. Yeah. The, so like, yeah, like the shoe, there's like some ambience in there. And then I think it just goes to the Kamiko stuff and then it's just like quiet and it's a little jarring. Um, yeah, so it's, yeah, I think, uh, I think, I think just Edwin has a, a bit farther to go in like developing his sensibilities, which is like such a difficult thing to, you know, like it's not like a concrete thing that I can like tell you to go do. Um, but I, it'll just come with practice and like repetition and getting critiqued often because mm -hmm. that's the only way that I kind of broke through that initial phase Yeah, because yeah. you just don't hear it at the beginning when you're starting out. You don't hear the things you're like this close to your own work. So yeah, it comes up a lot with uh, with redesigns on this channel where it, where it comes in literally a, a trailer redesign or something. And it's probably like if it were if it were a work in progress at the studio that made that game, it's probably like at a 30 percent done kind of state when it comes in as like a full redesign by, by someone who, who's up and coming. Because, yeah, you just don't know what the full yeah. one sounds like yet. Right. So it's a mm -hmm. lot of of referencing Edwin, like go to the original project and be like, what's it sound like? Go to games like that and reference it and see uh, what's happening in like the high frequencies and the low frequencies and like what what the like like Felipe said like in the, in the gaps like what what were the holes being filled and and what are they filled with? Uh, I want to call it one quick thing in the chat. Uh, Andrew Ryan, you were saying it seems a bit out of sync. I think that's my bad actually. I I have it's not worth getting into detail. But basically, I can choose one routing or the other routing, and one is like 0. 0.125 seconds longer. No. So no, there's definitely sync issues. Oh, there you go. Um, it wasn't my bad. That was actually <laughs> one of my points of feedback because. Um, when you have sync issues in a redesign, it communicates uh, it communicates laziness and mm. uh, and not being attentive to detail, um, because we know that since you're working in a linear uh, doll, you have complete control over that. Um, and there's other things too, like um, you know the rhythm, the rhythmic, the rhythm of collecting the coins or those those things, like that wasn't consistent. So you want to think about that and make sure that things that are highly repetitive. Um, cause there's also at the very beginning of, of the Kamiko, it's when those fireballs start shooting, you don't actually start making sound until the third or fourth one. Mm. And that would actually be a bug in the game. So you're basically introducing a bug in a linear media that has no source of the bug and mm -hmm. then making that part of what you're putting front and center. Yeah. So that's why like sync, uh, synchronization becomes so important. Yeah, just attention to detail being very important. It's not, it's easy to think like, oh, well, where else would they, would they, might they end up, if we hired this person, like where else might they be making like shortfall little mistakes like here and there? Mm -hmm. um, right. Uh, Jack, do you have any final thoughts here before we move on to uh, Sergio? I think for redesigns in general or doing anything delinear, even, even as your career progresses and you're working on cinematics, uh, if you ever do, uh, uh, watch out for blind spots in yourself like uh you know for example in the kamiko you know uh, a bunch of the bullets uh get shot in the air and then they fall down and there's no sound as they fall like good rule of thumb is if it moves on the screen it probably needs a sound uh, i mean that's good for game dev in general if it moves in game it probably needs a sound so just catch uh keep your eye for coverage on 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 things like that and I, I think that'll definitely help. Yeah, with those balls falling specifically, there is a shadow that appears, which means there is a thing in code that that sound could be hooked up to. Like there's a moment. It's not like it's just, you know, you, you can tell where the sync point is basically from that shadow, shadow appearing. So that's a good place to uh, to sync that to, Evan. Um, and yeah, worth mentioning too, Evan, I absolutely also had horrible pops in my first reel. <laughs> so I think I, I I sent in like a some string arrangement thing I'd done. And I don't think I faded a single region in that entire Pro Tools session. So there you go, kind of an issue. Oh, can I can I pop in with one thing? Going back to the 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 website portfolio. You want to pop in? Go for it. Um, uh, <laughs> on the this this is a this is a minute well, nitpick, this. but uh, this this is something that I do look for is on your the tab for your website. It says your name dash sound designer, and it's got the word the default WordPress icon next to it. 
you can change that to whatever you want. Mm. So it just shows an attention to detail to have your logo or your your face or avatar or your icon in that spot. Yeah, it's uh, it's just another one of those plus ones. Again, just you, you think of it in terms of like not having it isn't like an actively hurting you thing, but you need to think of it in terms of how you're measuring up against everyone else who's applying for that same gig. And when they have all these details dealt with, then they're just going to look better. So they have more pluses than you do, even though your skill might be adequate. It's very possible. But if they have a lot more attention to detail and a lot more kind of, you know, shiny bits here and there in their, in their presentation of their, their person, then yeah, they're going to come out on top. So just think of a, think of how you measure up against everyone else basically. Um, okay, great. So yeah, it definitely seems a, very template-y. Um, yeah, with, with Jack's mention of the Favicon and also, like I said, search being kind of a weird thing to have on a real, because I don't know what I would search here. Like the page is pretty small. <laughs> it's not like, uh, it's, it's not like it's a, a storefront or something like that. It's just, you know, this feels very template-y. And then again, when you're a template and there's not a lot of like identity to your work, it just ends up blurring in with everyone else who applied for the same job. So go ahead, please. Um, just some final thoughts. Um, I think, uh, something good for Edwin to do is like, go back, go back to this reel and like, close your eyes when you're listening to it. Like, don't focus so much on the visuals and see if you can figure out like what's going on. Cause I think that is one of the biggest things for me is like, if I close my eyes during shoe, uh, like the waterfall sounds like a stream that's like right, right in my face. Um, the, you know, there's cer certain things that like aren't communicated just through the sound. Um, the only reason that I know that it, it like the footstep is that sound is because I hear I see the guy run and that's the sound playing. But mm -hmm. if I close my eyes, I wouldn't necessarily be like, oh, that's a footstep. Um, so I think that would be a good exercise for him to do is just like listen back to your stuff with your eyes closed and like try to like keep pushing it in the direction of like every time you close your eyes and listen to it, you, you understand what's going on and just like spacing some things out, like the waterfall, for example, like push it back. Like it doesn't need to be that upfront. Um, even like panning some things, um, and the Kamiko ones, you know, so there's like some, so you get a sense of space. It's not just like sound effects, like all playing, um, in like full stereo. Yeah, totally. Like not just from right in front of your face. It's like it's all around help build the dimension of the of the uh, game out. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so and, I guess um, it's sorry, Mason. Well, yep. Sorry, I, I'm gonna. Oh, I didn't mean to talk over you. Sorry. That's fine. Go ahead. Um. Uh. The one last thing I would mention is just throughout. There's kind of like we're missing high frequencies and low frequencies. It's very mm -hmm. kind of band limited as a full demo. So you might want to take a look at your monitoring environment and your tools for monitoring. You usually want to hear that. What that tells me is that there's a weakness in the room and also your equipment. And if you can't hear well, then you can get better at layering, but you're still going to be missing those fundamentals. Um, and, and you're really leaving a lot off the table. So you might want to take a step back from the content and kind of examine um, you know, your space and your equipment and see what you can do um, to, to get a better listening environment. Mm, sure. And I think um, uh, that was definitely something that in my early sound design, um, I struggled with as well. It's just kind of a, a muted uh, spectrum. Uh, mm. um, not necessarily because of my room, um, but just because of my, my, I hadn't developed those sensibilities. And so I wasn't necessarily thinking fully in terms of making sure that the low end, the high end played well with the mids. It was like, oh, well, these are the libraries I have and these are the recordings that I can make and that's all I got. And so I just had a, a limited sort of frequency range. And mm -hmm. That was something I struggled with. Too. Yeah, me too. Absolutely. That's my old stuff. And it's like, yep, this is <laughs> it's smacks yep. of early Kevin Regany. Uh, okay, great. So I think oh, we'll I put a blanket on that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I, think I think it's probably... Can I have a final, final thought? <laughs> oh, sure. Go for it. <laughs> um, I think, uh, you know, because it's just like such a, a huge dump of critique all at once. Uh, it can be like uh, kind of discouraging, but um, like like I said, like you're you're well on your way, like. And I think one of the greatest assets you have, like just judging by your blog and like, I'm not gonna lie, like I I watched all of the stuff before the show today, and like I did a deep dive into like people's YouTube and stuff. Like you seem like a super passionate guy, 
and like genuinely excited about this stuff. And so just from like, like your sound design, if you just stick with it, like it will get to the level you want to get to, but what you can't really teach someone is how not to like, how not to be an asshole, like how, how to be like a <laughs> yeah. person you want to be around, especially like in games, you're going to be in the trenches with your team. Like, so like you're just personality wise, you're definitely someone that like, I'd be happy to work with just getting a first impression of like who you are and like seeing your thoughts and like what you care about. Mm -hmm. So I think you should feel really good about that and just like, just work on the craft itself. Cause you have like the other things that will like bring you success later. Yeah. That's an excellent point. Absolutely. Um, in terms of standing out in a crowd, that's certainly one point like culture wise. It's yeah, super good. I think this is a great example of a reel that I, I would love to see a version 2.0 of like in six months kind of thing come back and say like, here here's the new version and here's what the things i've addressed and here's what i'm thinking of these days in terms of like all the points you've covered and that is a also a wonderful way to stand out if you've applied before and you apply again and you get like rejected like it's fine it doesn't matter if you're rejected just apply again and then show them you've been working in the meantime and it, that's that's a very very good look so i'm going to give you one of these edwin thanks so much uh, and let's move on to Sergio Ronchetti, shall we? Okay. Um, yeah, I'm looking at the times. So we have like about 15 for each for Sergio and, uh, and Enrico. So we covered, covered a lot of like kind of general stuff in the last one. So, uh, let's go into Sergio. So we got home, I'll zoom in too. zoom in like 150. Sure. So we got home music, sign design. Sergio link to the where, where we are cool about upcoming talks upcoming talks really contact I'm going to upcoming talks first that's interesting okay we got intro to game audio composition global game jam this is crazy man I like this racing how do you feel about this yeah yeah um, yeah <laughs> I think that, that this is this is great this gives a lot of information even if I don't have time to dig into it um, it tells me that he's been really active Absolutely. I love that. Um, again, just back to culture stuff. It's like you're obviously serious even before we hear anything, you know? So we got about, let's go there first. Uh, we got a London based composer and sound designer with an interest in dark moody themes, prolific public speaker and educator of game audio ex touring metal bassist. Um, I now also have a mustache now, there it is currently playing BFME two rise of the witch king. Nice. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know that I've ever acknowledged you're in London, Sergio. Uh, we've like, just for everyone else's information, I've had extensive chats with Sergio here and there, um, mostly in regards to his work on Eldest Souls, which I played a demo of last Steam summer sale or something. So yeah, I, I know Sergio's work a little bit already, uh, but I'm going in fresh on a new reel that he sent our way like yesterday. I think it was like really recently. I don't think it's even on the, on the main page yet. Like this is, yeah, this is a January reel. This is old. So your website is not up to date with <laughs> yesterday. Uh, okay. So let's just go ahead and dive in and watch the YouTube video I linked in the, the group chat, guys. Go full screen and I will again mute myself. Uh, let's go with three, two, one, and.
Okay. <clears throat> All right. So before we dive into things, I'll clarify for... <laughs> I probably need to clarify for the guys at Obsidian. The intro where it said, uh, uh, like the, the meeting was called, they were just discussing. We have Matvin and Regimson. So that GDC real talk talk I mentioned earlier, we didn't want to actually review a real person for obvious reasons on stage at GDC. So we, I actually made a, a fake person that was a combination of Matthew Martinson and Kevin Regimson. It was Matvin Regimson. And we just basically dragged this guy through the dirt on stage at GDC. So this is a, this opening 30 seconds is questionable for a, in, in my opinion, is questionable for a submission of a reel to like a AAA studio. But we are, are always saying on Real Talk to tell your reel to its audience. So I suppose this is perfect for a Real Talk breakdown. Um, I might ignore the first 30 seconds for, and I'd probably encourage Obsidian to as well. Um, but we can talk about that. It's pretty, pretty funny. Thank you, Sergio. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I appreciated that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know Ben Burt played uh, Among Us. So that's. <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah, so Rayson, you want to give us a first impression of the whole thing for us? Yeah, it um, it provided a good example of using um, the full frequency spectrum, um, and I thought a lot of the things that were forward uh, were done well. However, it was also missing a lot of layering. There's a lot of points where there's energy effects, but I don't hear anything really supporting them. Um, Something you'd be cognizant of, especially with energy, is that you often want to be able to automate like a small peak or a filter, um, to kind of like so that you get frequency movement uh, over the lifetime of that thing on the screen. Mm -hmm. um, specifically with the Godfall example, um, and uh, there's all sorts of other little impacts. So during the um, you know, when the ring is starting to drag, um, I'm missing uh, trans, not necessarily transients, but elements that kind of punch in and really kind of introduce the movement of a thing. Um, so right there, that energy was a big one where there was a sound effect, but I really wasn't getting any of that stuff traveling up. And mm -hmm. all of that, those elements are things that can lead into the impact at the big moment. And you're hitting a lot of the big moments good, but by missing the detail, um, you know, it's not really pulling me in because I'm not able to really pick or, or uh, dig into the texture of the sound. Um, and one of the other things I, I thought I would note is that just the mix is a little bit off to me in that we have very present uh, elements and then we have very quiet elements. But things like the crowd during the, you know, um, I don't know, I'll call it a Balrog. I, I wasn't looking closely at the what it was actually from, but the crowd, the 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 shooting of the the weapon fire during the slow mo scene, mm -hmm. they're sort of like popping, pop, pop, pop. But while there's a feature there and there's a bass drop, they just they don't sit in the same space. So during slow mo, you also want to introduce maybe some reverb and everything, and you want to make sure there's a bed of something for that verb to kind of sit into, so that everything kind of situates itself inside the scene. Mm -hmm. um, during the the very first intro. Um, the nice thing is that I, it's what I like about the um, indie stuff is that it, it demonstrates some range. But the problem with the indie stuff is that the title cards that hit the the little elements like that, um, they're missing layers and impact. And so one element is there, but we're not really getting like whooshes in with a dramatic hit with multiple layers of elements there. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, um, yeah, that's maybe I'd worth, say that's worth probably my condensed actually. take. So the in terms of of the indie thing, so one thing we always bring up on Real Talk is the idea of like using the materials you've selected to communicate the kind of job you're going for. If you're redesigning indie games, you probably want to work in indie games. That's assumable, right? So yep. if you see a reel, it has um unless I actually Sergio, can you tell me in the chat, like if you're submitting to Obsidian, for instance, would you kill off that intro clip? Like was that specifically for Real Talk? Or are you thinking of like doing a cheeky among us intro for for any reel? So I feel like your actual reel starts at like 20, like 28 seconds ish. Never says, there you go. So yeah, never. So yeah, ignore entirely, but I'm curious racing then, um, say there was like uh, a minute long reel and there's say four pieces in it and three of them are like the kind of things Sergio chose. And one of them was say like, like our game, like Celeste, for instance, it's like a Celeste redesign. Would you look at Celeste and be like, well, that's kind of weird. Or would you look at that as, as a plus? Cause it's still pretty clear. They want to do the AAA thing. By 30 seconds, I should already be interested. 
And then when I hit Celeste at the end, I'll be like, oh, cool. He does that stuff too. Mm-hmm. But it's definitely a follow on. Mm-hmm. Sure, it's, sure, sure. it's an and statement. Oh, um, nice. yeah. And it's not the, the principal thing. And then, yeah, vice versa, exactly what you said. If I was an indie developer, I would expect to see that swapped. Mm-hmm. Um, great. So then, uh, Jack, do you have any, I mean, racing, you, you mentioned a lot of great points in terms of like frequency movement. That was a big one that uh, I, I heard in particular on the Warframe impact uh, when they like launch into the air and come back down. It's like, Doof. it kind of, I'll play it right here. Like it's like, it kind of just stays there, kind of moving up and down, show the start and the end, all that. I love that so much. Uh, Jack, do you have any comments to build on to what Rayson was saying in terms of content stuff? Yeah, I think um, uh, the two things that stuck out to me uh, overall, um, I just had a hard time following the trailer because it was, or the, the, the video, because it was just jumping around between scenes so quickly. Um, uh, I would have maybe liked to have seen the 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 demo focus more on one scene at a time for longer, so that way I have time to kind of absorb what's going on, as well as have time to to see see the the, the creative sound design um, outside of just the really cool moments. So like it's it's a it's a video uh, chopped up of of really cool moments, but mm-hmm. you don't really have enough time to exist in the ambience or understand the foley or just like those interstitial moments between the the action like which are also places of creative and important sound design that you know is is something to show off right right and and a kind of a symptom of that or a a thing that made that really stand out for me was kind of the whooshes and i think it was the godfall example that goes into the batman example Mm -hmm. a lot of those whooshes felt pretty kind of samey especially between the two characters they felt like there was the same whooshes and you didn't necessarily understand which characters whoosh you were hearing at any one time. And then when it transitioned into the Batman uh, fight scene, it was the same whooshes. Although mm-hmm. that's a completely different universe, a completely different style. It's, it's not, you know, giant Lord monsters wearing armor. It, it's, it's two guys. And, but the whooshes had the same power and it. It, it, it just, it's that stood out to me a good bit. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> yeah. I love seeing like a quiet moment in, uh, like actually um Alex uh in the chat just sent me a real tab look at the other day and there was a really nice like wonderful kind of ambience focused section actually and it was like from a from a horizon game and um it was just like walking through a cave and like now you're outside and it was just like a transition from space to space with a bit of UI in the middle. And I was like, that's cool actually, because it's, it's that'll be part of your job too, potentially if you're applying a place like this. It's not like you're only gonna be doing the uh the the trailer content, right? So Yeah, that's I, you know, as, as, you know, as a, as someone who would be hiring, like if I saw a video like that, like, oh, well, one of, if, if we were to move forward with them, one of the first questions I would have to ask is like, oh, are you okay doing ambiences? Are you okay mm-hmm. doing UI? Like, uh, cause, cause it was just the cool moments. Yeah. I'm curious too, cause in here, I know that Sergio is using, or do I know, is it using FMOS studio, I think for, for Eldest Souls? I seem to recall having that conversation with you. Um, so I know that you're doing a little bit in terms of implementation stuff. Uh, FMOD, yes, to Sergio. So there isn't anything that suggests that Sergio has any implementation, like any technical chops at all in this reel. So is that going to be a problem, Grayson? Like if there's, sorry, for muted. <laughs> sorry, I was muted. Um, um, yeah, I mean, pot- potentially, um, if it kind of depends on what we're hiring for. Mm. Uh, but I, but I would agree. I would agree. I wasn't even thinking about that. Um, and if we were hiring for someone that we need to do a lot of heavy implementation, um, do system work like that, that would be an issue. Um, some of that I'll, I'll pull out of the resume. Right. Um, because it's also hard, like the F mod, uh, demo stuff. Um, it's hard, but it's hard to squeeze that into 20 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. So that can be difficult. So, um, well, here's actually I have another question. That might then. be good so, stuff for the end of a reel. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is really relevant. It didn't even occur to me. Of course, the indie question from earlier is absolutely like directly relevant to Sergio because he's working on Eldest Souls, which is an indie game that's mm-hmm. shipping on Switch, right? Like, this is it's a yeah. legit thing to be shipping a game at all because a lot of people have shipped nothing, um, especially applying for some junior role at some AAA studio, I'm sure. So, I mean, if you saw, for example, all that AAA content designed at the first, you know, 
45 seconds ish. And the last 15 was some work he was doing now being like, yeah, I'm doing it. I'm working right now, guys. And here's the stuff I've been doing. Like, is that worth putting in there? You think? I, I think so. Cause if there's a clip of like, here's, I implemented all the sound you're hearing and it's a straight game capture. Mm -hmm. Like that's how, that's how I would pull that through. And then because the details of how he implemented could be any, you know, hundred different ways. Right. So just the end product is enough for me to at least say, I want to talk to this person more. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Even just implying. So, heavily, yeah, yes, I, I, I do think as a week now, if it's a content heavy position, then maybe I'm fine with that. Just, I already expect that to be a follow-up co uh, conversation, but, um, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Uh, Felipe, I've been ignoring you. Sorry, man. Do you have any thoughts on, on the, the content stuff? No, I think you, you guys uh, covered like a lot of it. I uh, had a lot of the same notes, like the kind of blue, energy stuff um mm -hmm. kind of missing from a lot of shot shots but then they weren't in some other shots so there was like a bit of a disconnect um for me the 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 warframe uh the gunshots where the dude's like backflipping in slow motion like just kind of stuck out at me as a little awkward um i really like the transition at, at 49 seconds where it's like an explosion and then it's like the other game all of a sudden in like a similar shot um I thought that was like pretty Yeah, clear. no, me too. I didn't even realize at first that it was not a zoom out from Warframe, that it was actually yeah. the next shot was Godfall. And I love that. Just that that extra little attention to detail in terms of how you're presenting your work. Like it's obvious you put some thought into this. It's not like you just grabbed mm -hmm. some clips and said like, screw it, it's yeah. fine and and we're done. Um, so I, I really appreciate that. Um, also, Godfall is a cool game to redesign. I haven't seen a redesign of Godfall yet. That was uh, done by our yeah. pals here in Vancouver at a shell in the pit, um, Gordon McGladdery and others. Um, Great. So uh, I think on the whole, just moving into distinction here, on the whole, I think that the the nuance of this conversation is probably an indication that Sergio is like certainly on his way in a big way. Uh, I, I love that we're able to even nitpick stuff like think about like frequency movement during, you know, during things happen. Like I love that that's even a, a consideration in this conversation. So um, I guess I'll just ask you, Rayson, do you think that in a crowd, if Sergio applied with this reel, minus the Among Us at the front, do you think he'd be standing out in a crowd? Uh, I think so. I think if, if, I, if I was hiring a mid-level, junior level, he would stand out very much. If it was mid-level, I'd say he would be worth us a, a deeper look. Cool. Uh, so this reel would make me look at his website more. Right, there uh, you go. But I would maybe, I don't know. Um, I hesitate to say middle of the pack or anything. I do think it's a little bit better, but... Um, I actually did appreciate the transition and that that attention to detail with your video transitions um, demonstrates like an artistic mind. Mm -hmm. And so that's a good kind of subtlety um, to be able to have in there. Um, and I don't know. I, I also pay attention to that stuff because I have a uh, I'm a hobbyist color uh, grader and doing uh, colorist work and editing and stuff. So I appreciate that. Stuff. Yeah, sure. So it's all just storytelling. might also right? be a personal thing of me. Yeah, absolutely. And mine. Uh, there you go. Yeah, great. Okay, so let's uh, let's give uh, Sergio one of these. Thanks, man. Really cool having you on. I've been, I've been you know, of course, on you for a while, so it's great to see your work. Let's move on to Enrico. I know you said you put your the pronunciation of your name in the chat. I'm sorry. Is it Ercole? Er 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 oh God, I'm sorry. Let's go. Zoomed in. Ercole. Ercole. Is that right? Ercole. Oh, yeah, I'll trust Felipe in this case. Ah, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> uh all right so uh we got sound designer home portfolio about blog again jack you want to guess blog post or have you looked already i haven't looked i'm gonna guess uh it's gonna be the same as mine which is uh september 2020 <laughs> okay <laughs> i will guess september 2019 i'm a, I'm a pessimist let's uh the oh, page not found it's even worse <laughs> It's 404? Oh, because I control Wait, clicked I, it. That's why. I got it. Okay, I, I control clicked it to open a new page, so I didn't like that. Uh, okay, well, it was in fact oh, yeah. November of last year. Okay, you're 404 away from date. <laughs> this is Andrew. Uh, okay, there you go. So I was fully wrong. Um, pretty recent. Nice, Enrico. Good. I won't control click things anymore. Uh, all right, so we got contact. Okay, let's go to about here. About me, I'm a freelance sound designer with five years of experience in, in the industry covering multiple roles from location sound to audio mixing and mastering. I'm best known for my work in the mobile game Ruya, My Spira. Is that 
one game and the short film Dark Lights. And I'm currently involved in multiple sound design projects, both for film and games. I'm looking for opportunities as an in-house sound designer. Please feel free to email me from the contact section if you think I could be the right person for your audio team. Okay. All right. Do you have uh, any bio thoughts, Rayson? I have a nitpick. Um, Go for it. Instead of saying I'm best known, uh, I would suggest saying my latest projects are. Sure. Uh, because you don't want to say I'm best known and make a declarative statement that runs counter to it, but I don't know who you are. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of a, you're asking the reader to respond to a declarative statement. Um, and so uh, rather than saying that you want to make sure if you say you're best known, you want to make sure it's something that everyone knows because um, yeah. then it's going to land really well. Yeah, I feel so, bad. I feel bad I, personally. It's a small nitpick, but that's <laughs> kind of my my reasoning behind it. Well, I mean, even just my reaction reading, I was like, "Oh, I don't know what this is." <laughs> that's just yeah. I, I, I felt kind of you know rude for not knowing what you're best known for, man. It's like an ironic contrast that gets triggered by it, even though I know what he's trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, great. So let's move into let's just glance at the portfolio really quick. Uh, okay, a lovely, lovely vista. Okay. Oh, and some implementation work too. Whoa, it's jumping around. Okay, sound design. That's kind of cool, actually. All right. Showing you doing it. Recording plungers. Excellent. Okay, so we have a wise showreel. Oh, it's a separate showreel. That is, I can't see how long it is because it's, this page is kind of messing with me a bit. There's a lot going on. What is happening? Hi. My okay, name is pause. Zach. There we go. All right, four minutes long. Cool, you're narrating it. Neat. Let's, oh, and here's that game you mentioned. Hopefully we'll see more of that. Okay, great. So lots of things you've done. You've been busy. Let's go back to home again and let's watch this thing. So I will again mute myself. Oh, or will I? There we go. So 129. Okay. Full screen and three, two, one. Thank you, Enrico. Uh, Felipe. Hello. I don't think I gave you a, a, a first impressions opportunity yet. So <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Just a couple sentences kind of idea. We'll move into the, into the meat in a second. Wait, I'm sorry, what? I, I Sorry, I just said, yeah, just, just, a, few, just a few sentences of, uh, of first impression, and we'll get into the, ah, into the uh, meat later. Oh, okay. Um, I think uh, I think there's a ton of cool sound design in there. Um, there's there's a, a few things that, like, uh, m maybe, like, some some holes in there that, that could be filled. Um, I think the Devil May Cry stuff for, stands out to me in that regard, where, like, there's a lot of cool sounds in the Devil May Cry. Uh, may cry sequence but there's a lot of stuff like the red fiery energy like i'm not like i'm it's super loud visually but i'm not like hearing it um i feel like because it's like a fighting kind of game like you could play up those punches a lot more um i really like uh having a little uh the header and the tail with your own little sound in there with your logo like i think that's cool mm -hmm. um 
yeah yeah for me i think of all the stuff the devil may cry stuff like stood out as maybe not as good as the other stuff cool uh, i know we're short on time here so i'll just uh get racing do you have any just content quality ideas first it's pretty obvious as far as what he's going for triple a and such so we'll move it there yeah um okay i'll try to be quick uh first with the website um please change your background to a dark gray uh, or 40 percent gray all of your video footage has a lot of dark in it and it's too contrasty so it actually hurts the eyes a little bit all right um so you want things to be a little bit similar in tone and that'll actually make your website a lot more pleasant and the orange and pink tones in your uh, logo will pop even more mm -hmm. um the uh one of the things that say is um the motion graphic intro was great i really liked that as soon as i saw it the part in fallout 4 when you're suiting up make sure you use the lfe there so you can really make that more impactful because remember when you're closer to elements like a microphone you want to be simulating the microphone in a way that you get that exaggerated uh base and, and largeness um and then that el helps separates the next clip when he's walking off into the distance and then you can focus more on the pneumatics like you do there um let me see what was uh the tinnitus very yeah. be very very yeah. careful with that i was gonna um, say that <laughs> yeah you can actually trigger tinnitus with people that have it if you hit that frequency too hard um and that would be that would definitely be a problem for you in a demo and i i have friends who do have tinnitus and are sound designers and so um that would be an issue i would say overall it's almost always better to try to find a stylistic way of representing that and instead of using a pure tone um and what else was oh the zelda sequence um two problems with the zelda sequence uh one some of those hits you were had sounded like kind of metallic trailer hits that are more musical in nature i used to do a similar mistake when i was uh younger earlier in my career where i would use them to get metal but the problem is that there's a there's a recorded space to them that then makes it really hard to situate them in the scene because you still have this hall of reverberation and and they never feel quite right and the mm -hmm. other thing is that um, the Zelda scene sounded more sci-fi to me than fantasy. And so there was a clash in um, the stylization of the audio compared to what I already know about the series. And there's no way for me to get away from the expectations I have because it's such a well-known thing. So um, I, would, I would maybe worry or not worry, um, try to focus on ways to be more fantastical without it sounding like sci-fi or synth design or that kind of um, modulated tremolo that kind of stuff because mm -hmm. that approach was present in so many of the other clips um, and then I would just remove the Devil May Cry clip entirely rather than spending time on making that more detailed or the punches more impactful um, there were a lot of moments there that felt just a little bit weird to me in balance and focus um, and I would just rip it out rather than um trying to double down on that clip because the other clips are all really strong and i would say more double down on those nice and uh finally like a minute left jack what do you think man uh everything the other guys said there you um, go yeah, just, uh, <laughs> uh, watch that tinnitus um uh watch dynamic range i feel like once you got to the fallout like everything jumped up like 6 db uh compared to everything else um but i mean solid solid work like just have the coverage, uh, check for coverage. Same things, same things that tripped all of us up when we were uh, kind of uh, starting and mm -hmm. getting steam is just making sure that you're hitting everything that needs to be hit. Sweet. Um, I'll talk a little more on this after I let you guys go. I mean, it's like 1.30 here, so I leave my time. So uh, I guess final thing, Rayson, do you think he's standing out in a crowd? Yeah. There you go. Nice. Well, thanks, Enrico. Blazing through. Also, sorry, I don't even have a Twitch account, everyone, so I wish I could reply to chat. Uh, but uh, <laughs> that's my old man moment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So just uh, before you do anything else, do you want to shout as far as Obsidian's work or your own stuff you want to you know, point people to? Go for it. Hard no. It's <laughs> <laughs> hard at work well, and stuff. I, I, I'm on Twitter. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write. Uh, yeah, there I you work go. on Twitter a lot. Um, Excellent. So just add me, I'll add you, and we'll see what what you're up to. Okay, I'll give you guys this. Thank you so much for giving your time to us so graciously, so generous. And I'm uh, Rayson Varner on Twitter, uh, RaysonVarner.com. And uh, yeah, feel free. Just reach out to me if anyone has questions. Uh, I love talking to people. Um, and I have a bad habit of doing too much. 
So uh, if you ask me for a breakdown or something like someone recently did, I might make a 30 minute video. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's an addiction. Definitely. Try to save me from myself. No, no. Uh, reach out if you like. Okay. Thanks so much, guys. We'll see you around. Thank you. Dude, thank you. Bye bye. Killer. Um, yeah, I'll just continue on Enrico. They had to run to a meeting. I didn't want to take too much of their time here. So um, really quick on the, on the note of the, the building up of the suit and stuff. Um, yeah, it was like w one thing I felt in general, there was, there were certainly holes to be filled in terms of design and such, but, and just, you know, things that were missed and such. But I think in general, you might consider dynamics a little more like over time, kind of letting, letting some things breathe a bit. Uh, it was even a symptom of the tinnitus thing because the tinnitus was so loud and like that was meant to be kind of like a quiet moment after the impact. Right. But really it was still, it was still loud. So with the, uh, with this building up, um, there was like this kind of quieter moment here, but while there's things happening, it's like, just strip the whole, the whole thing like that. One second, let me pull the volume back up. Um, and it's not just in terms of volume, it's in terms of like the kind of things you're hearing. So Rayson mentioned like the, the lower end in the, in the building up for proximity effect. Certainly, absolutely. But even in terms of like the kind, like the size of the metal from like, from thing to thing, um, I love, I, I do love that you have like the, the kind of those, those elements in there too. But with stuff like like th this is such a classic kind of sound design piece, right? Like the, the many articulating things like opening the vault door or like, you know, like whatever the uh, building the ship or like launching the, the, the spaceship or like, or, uh, or th in this case, like building the suit. Um, there's all these little articula articulations. So it's super fun to get into those details for sound design. Right. But when I'm doing things like this, I often think of it in terms of, of uh, like from a, from an audio direction standpoint, I take a step back from it first and think, okay, what are the various things at play here? Like, do we have, um, do we have like pneumatics? Do we have like parts of it? Like if it was a ship launching, do, do the, the wings like go out or is there like parts of the wings that go out? Like what are the different parts that might sound that, that might come through in terms of sound and how do they sound different to help, you know, like Felipe was saying, closing your eyes and being able to hear what's actually happening. So in this case, um, we hear like the and so forth. Like, I don't know that I really, I don't, I don't know that I'm certain where those sounds are coming from, like the and so forth. It seems kind of generalized, if that makes sense. Like, th there is some, some like really nicely synced stuff at the beginning. Like, clink, clink. I like that little thing of the, these popping in the little arm, or the sort of arm, the, the leg guard. That's cool. But in general, like are these various other things, I don't know, like, where the sounds are coming from. You know, like in, in particular, there's like those three, like boom, boom, and the chest plate. And those are really big story moments, but we have like kind of generalized like tink, 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 tink happening. And I feel like those, those layers will probably make sense in the grander scheme of the design, but probably as like a lower, a lower aspect. Cause that's kind of into, it's almost like, you're put, you're showing us the stuff we can't see, but not the stuff we can see, which is a little more, a little less common. Um, usually you get like all like the big moments, but kind of the pepperings that are maybe uh, hidden from view or out of frame are not heard as much. So in this case, I feel like I'm hearing the pepperings and the out of frame stuff, but not the stuff that's like right in front of my face. So yeah, it, it's think of like the these plate, like chunk chunk. Is that the same material, like same kind of grade of metal, same thickness as the rest of it? Is it like this stuff is, you know, a little more kind of maybe resonant because it's got the, the shape to it as opposed to being a, a solid plate. Um, you can do a lot with this sequence. You have a lot to play with. And uh, it's definitely a hero moment of your reel. So I'd focus like really, you know, sink your teeth in as far as uh, like getting this really detailed and, and sounding right. Okay. Um, that's really all I wanted to add. I mean, Rayson and Jack and Felipe had plenty of other really, really helpful tips here and there. I saw the chat saying that some, some God tier advice and so forth. And absolutely. I think we're all really fortunate to kind of get that, that badass uh, team in here to help us out. Um, okay, great. So I will just end off and say that uh, if any of those three people like Sergio and Edwin and Enrico, if you have any other questions or clarifications, 
you want to follow up with me, feel free to. I'm available on Twitter, either at RegMeK or at Power Up Audio. Um, either one, it'll, it'll reach me. And uh, as well, if anyone's looking to submit their own work for Real Talk, feel free to do so at the same place on Twitter or just via our contact inquiry form on our website. That works too. Okay. And I think uh, I should go back to some classic Celeste. Let's go. Oh, yeah. There it is. <laughs> and maybe, uh, yeah, feel free to let me know how you feel about the time change. We're going to try this for a while and see how it goes. Um, I was worried about doing it earlier in the day because streaming is so exhausting. Like being on stage for, for 90 minutes is, it takes a lot out of you. <laughs> so, um, yeah, let me know. I know there's a lot of folks in Europe who, who wish they could tune in and stuff. And I'm sure this time change helps a lot. I was surprised to see Natasha in the chat, by the way. Aren't you in Australia? Isn't it like 5 in the morning there right now or something? Isn't it super early, Natasha? What are you doing here? My god. Um, anyway. It's the first three minutes. There you go. <laughs> 7 a.m. is better. Okay, well, there you go. It's not so bad. 7 a.m. isn't the worst. Okay, thanks. Uh, great. I mean, I, depending on how I do with this time and how it fits into like our work week and stuff, um, I think I could probably get used to it. It's, it's always been kind of nice to end the day with real talk, but uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. We'll try this for a few weeks at least, or a few um, episodes of Real Talk, and we'll see how we're doing. Uh, I'm working on getting some more guest hosts for the future, so we'll see how we do, and of course, I'll let you know the moment I know. And thank you, everyone, for being in the chat and offering your own thoughts and such. It's great seeing that, as always. And I will see you in two weeks. Yes? Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs>